first proof, the scientific proof, is uh, the, uh, an astronomical proof, we can call it. And basically what these ulama say is that how many times, you know, they tell the, the ulama of the first view, they say you compared the moon to the sun, they say that's wrong. You cannot compare the moon to the sun. Why? Because how many times is the, is the moon born? When we say new moon, that's like the, the, the moon is born. It goes into you know, a, a state of mahaq that the ulama call it, which you can't see it, and then it's born once again. You could see the crescent once again. How many times is the moon born? There's only one new moon, isn't there? Even as an astronomer, astronomer there is only one new moon. While with sunset and sunrise, you have multiple sunsets and multiple sunrises. Even astronomers, they accept this. Every area has their own sunset. The sun rises and the sun sets. That's based on location. But the moon being born, the new moon, is not based on location. We only have one new moon, and that is not based on your area. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's for the entire world. And the new moon itself does not signalize the new month, the ulama say. Some people say, oh, the new, month, the new moon, you could find that astronomically. When the new moon happens, the new month begins. That does not signalize the new month. You have to wait after that, some hours after that. Because as we mentioned, the, the moon enters a state of mahaq, meaning you can't see it anymore because there's no light being reflected from the sun back at you. So it's pitch black. You can't see it. Until it starts orbiting, once it starts orbiting once again, it goes away from the sun, you begin to see the light of the moon once again, the crescent. That very first second, when you begin, the people of the earth, begin seeing the light of the moon, this is, what the, this is when the new month officially begins. So once again, the ulama of Wahdatul Afaq, the second view, they say how many times does you know, after the, the moon entering the state of pitch darkness, mahaq, how many times does it leave that state? It only leaves it once. It can't leave more than twice because the first second that it leaves, khalas, it left. It, it, it can't happen twice. It's like you're leaving your house. You only leave your house once. After that, it's, you've left. Nothing else is happening. So they say because the moon only leaves that state of mahaq, which is pitch darkness, and then a crescent forms, it only happens once, that means there could only be one second, one instance where the new month begins. And it has to be universal, it has to be for the entire world. Because it only happens once for the entire world. Where the world, the entire world could not see the moon, and then all of a sudden they saw the moon. This only happens once, that very first second. When they see the moon, this is when the new month begins. But with sunrise, with the sun, it's based on location. So you can't compare a phenomenon which is the sun that is based on location to the moon which is not based on location. Astronomers, they say there's only one new moon and it leaves the mahaq, the moon leaves the mahaq and it turns into a crescent only once. That very first instant where it leaves, it only happens once, but for the sun, it happens multiple times. This is their justification. We may agree with this, we may not agree with that. We understand this, we go to the traditions of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam And I'll mention one hadith that the proponents of this view, Mabna Wahdat al Afaq mention, they rely on a bunch of ahadith of Ahlul Bayt to prove this. And I'll mention one hadith, Sahihat Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Abdullah. It's Sahih. The, the hadith is authentic. This man, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Abdullah, he says, I asked the Imam al-Sadiq one day, سَأَلْتُهُ عَنْ هِلَالِ رَمَضَانِ يَغُمُّ عَلَيْنَا فِي تِسْعَ وَعِشْرِينَ مِنْ شعبان. Once again, just like the other hadith I mentioned, it's the 29th of Sha'ban. Tomorrow's Ramadan, one, or is it 30th of Sha'ban? We don't know. And he says there's clouds in the air, in the, in the sky. We can't see. Maybe the moon is there, maybe it's not. So what do we do? He says, فَقَالَ لَا تَصُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ تَرَى Unless you see the moon, 
Do not fast tomorrow with the intention of Ramadan. Yes, tomorrow you can fast with the intention of mustahab, ma fi dhimma, you want to re redo uh, you know, an older fast, you can do that. But if you do not see the moon of Ramadan, you can't fast with the intention of Ramadan. You have to see it, then fast. And then the Imam said these words, and this is what they used to prove their point. He says, فَإِن شَهِدَ أَهْلُ بَلَدٍ آخر فَقْضِهِ the Imam said, if after Ramadan, people from another city, this is what the Imam says, another city, they come and they testify that we saw the moon of Ramadan on that night, that you guys never saw it, then you have to make that day up. 